Is there any practice you can recommend that can help seeing through personal doership? Well, the basic practice is to relax. To relax. That's step one. And then step two is to look. Relax and look. Chill out, take it easy, let the mind calm down. And when it's calm, have a look. Who's there? Knock, knock, who's there? What's the answer? Is anyone here? It becomes a rhetorical question. So obviously a rhetorical question is one that doesn't have a verbal answer. So who's here? What's happening? Well, this is here. This is happening. You don't have to put it into words. Is anybody doing any of this? It might appear that way. But they're just things happening, aren't they? Isn't it just things happening? Now, if you're really locked in to being the, the notion of being a doer, that is, if your ego is very strong, then there's a very strong, solid sense of being a person, of being an ego, of being a doer. I sometimes use the word ego, and when I say the word ego, I'm, I'm talking about the sense of being a doer. And for those of you who aren't sure what I mean by doer, what I'm talking about is the belief in the idea or concept that you are a separate entity that authors thoughts and actions that you create your own thoughts and actions, as opposed to thoughts and actions are spontaneous manifestations that, that occur within our awareness. So if your sense of doership, if your belief in being a doer is very strong, if it's grown strong through habit, then you might have to spend more time on relaxing the mind because the belief in doership is like well it's often called ignorance or avidya in Sanskrit and this ignorance is it's it's very sly and it's very persistent it's very very persistent you can imagine a glass of clear water and this ignorance is like ink. And just a drop of ink makes the entire beaker of water black or cloudy. Just a little bit of ink. And it pervades the entire glass of water. The entire body of water is pervaded by one small drop of ink. And that's what ignorance is like. Just a little bit of it discolors everything. And one of the problems for the seeker is that the seeker is looking from a place of ignorance. The seeker is looking from a place of ignorance. So the more it tries to figure it out, the more it just perpetuates the more it just perpetuates the ignorance. And ignorance is just in the mind. It just works on the level of beliefs, of ideas, of thought. Because it's essentially this belief in separation, in being this separate entity. This separate entity that then there's an additional belief, first of all, that the belief that you're a separate entity. And then on top of that, superimposed on top of that belief, or following on from that belief, is the belief in doership. 
which assumes a belief in separation prior to it. So this is all this belief is on the level of thought. And over time, those thought impressions go into the body as well. So they go into our whole physiological system. And our whole physiological system becomes wired in ignorance. Just like that drop of water pervades the entire glass of, the, the drop of ink, sorry, pervades the entire glass of water, a drop of ignorance pervades the mind and then pervades our entire experience of life. Our entire experience of life is pervaded by ignorance. But when you quieten the mind, when you relax the mind, then temporarily the ignorance is loosened, the ignorance is lessened. And, in, and it can give rise to a moment of clarity, a moment of insight. So. Listening to the teachings is important because the teachings are not coming from a place of ignorance. And so they can precipitate a realization in you because the teachings are flowing from a place of clarity. And in truth, clarity is always present in everyone everywhere so what I'm pointing to is already fully manifest in, in you in your consciousness in your experience there's no ignorance really so listening to these words can trigger a realization of that which is already clear which is already totally clear it can be triggered and realized and relaxation helps that so I was answering the question, what is, can you recommend a practice to see through the illusion of doership? And my response was, step one, relax. And step two, look. This actually represents the two aspects, the two wings of the teaching, the two aspects of the teaching, which we find in most developed spiritual traditions, which is that of purification and that of insight. These two wings of the teaching, firstly purification and secondly insights. Purification means a mind that is clear, that is clutter free, that's purified. That means it hasn't, it's not full of impurities. And what is the impurity we're talking about? We're talking about on the psychological level, on the mental level, the impurity of ignorance. The impurity of believing something that's not true. That's why it's an impurity, because it's belief in something that's untrue. And through relaxing the mind, through reducing the number of thoughts, ignorance reduces its hold on us. It's, it's holding us is lessened and the ability for us to see clearly is increased and that seeing clearly the way things are can lead to a removal of, of ignorance because we realize oh yeah I always thought it was this way but actually it's not this way at all it's something quite different I always thought I was a separate dual entity who created my thoughts and initiated my actions but it's not actually, when I actually look at my experience, it's not like that. So it can trigger the insight. And with the insight, what happens, it's like a, a whole load of relief. It's like, oh, there's no one here. And then the body relaxes. And the mind relaxes. And then in that relaxation, that's more purification, actually, you see. So the purif then there's more purification, the insight strengthens. And as the insight strengthens, the purification increases. And it builds up a positive momentum, these two aspects of the teaching, purification and insight, or relaxing and seeing. Relaxing and seeing.
you notice in teachings where they emphasize one over the other so some teachings emphasize insight and you'll notice that the people attracted to that tend to be more on the intellectual level they'll usually be getting it on the level of concepts and these pe other people often say things like I understand all the teachings but I don't get it it just I'm still suffering because the relaxation and the peace isn't in that in, in them I was gonna say in their hearts I, I like this word heart because for me it kind of feels here rather than up here but. and then on the other side people who are who em, the teachings that emphasize the purification the suffering continues as well because the insight isn't there they always think they're a person who needs to become purer and that's that's a heavy burden to carry that's a heavy burden to carry because as long as you think of yourself as being a, a doer entity or a person see when I say person again I'm talking about the doer the ego the doer this idea that you're the author of thoughts and actions so if you if you if the teaching emphasizes pur emphasizes purification so these are teachings that just emphasize maybe calming the mind and that's it and there isn't any sort of insight teaching there then there's the suffering continues because there's the burden of being the doer there's the burden of being a person just carried with you everywhere because the problem with purification is that like any action the effects of any action are impermanent they're transient or they're finite all actions themselves are finite that means they're limited in some way and the results of actions the consequences of actions are equally finite they're equally limited so for example if I relax my mind and I become very very peaceful I'm going to generate peace in my body in my mind in my physical system and that peace is going to be limited that means eventually it will end it will end because another energy will come into my body and want me to do something eventually or ultimately the body will eventually die and so the peace of the body will end then so all spiritual practices are limited and the results of spiritual practices are also limited but at the same time they can create the conditions for an insight to happen that insights also limited but what the insight is it the insight recognizes something that is already here and that something that's already here you could say is not limited actually you can't actually say whether it's limited or not actually all you can say is that it's already here Maybe I'm being a bit pedantic there, but you can't actually say if it's limited or not. <laughs>